nice uh, afternoon and I want to present something which would be definitely off the track that what we have heard from two days. The question is related to 20 minutes and roughly eight, eight years of research. So I don't know how much I can do. But anyway, let me try. Now this is nanocarbon onion that's crossing blood-brain barrier and that actually we have done in vivo. So that's the ultimate thing that I wanted to convey to you. Now what is carbon? The carbon is normally known, symbol this, non-metallic, this is the 15th most abundant, fourth most abundant element in the universe, in human body, next to oxygen. But in high school chemistry that we know that we have diamond and graphite, these are the two allotropes, but since then there are a number of new allotropes that has come in the picture, that is fullerene and carbon nanotubes and graphene. Now, <clears throat> if I want to say something, if it's a single uh, layer carbon nanotube and if you cut and make a sphere and that looks like fullerene, this one. But if it's a multi-layer, and if you cut to make a sphere, then a multi cell and what that could be actually looking. So that would be looking like that what we call as the carbon nano onions. Now that's the Ezima in 1980 first, he showed that this type of particle do exist and you got it that he made efforts that you can see, that's a spherical with a fringes and Ugarte, he showed how it can be the two with a high radiation can be cut and then slowly, slowly, then it can, ho it can go to the uh, spherical shape. Even it is better here in the next uh, paper that what you have shown. Now that is a high energy radiation by which the carbon nanotube can be cleaved and you can have a round shape. We introduced a simple pyrolytic method to produce nanocarbon onion and further its surface derivatization using hydrophilic groups to create water soluble nanocarbon for our study. So our nanocarbon onion, that is something, it was reminiscent of the addition used long ago for carbon filament, roughly the same. So though it is primitive, but it is exotic. Now the synthesis is something like that. You can get simply waste to do and then pyrolyze it and do something. Of course, we have a patent for this. So, this is the water soluble carbon onions. You can see the fringes and it is exactly that how it looks like, but it's water soluble. So. These are some of the things that one has to show, otherwise people won't believe. So the Raman infrared, stability, and same AFM TEM, HF TEM, all those things. Okay, fine. Now atomic force microscopy images that shows that what could be roughly the size of this type of onions. Solubility also, there is some recipe like that, that is soluble. The interesting part of the story here is that the absorbance and lumin luminescence emission spectra progressively it shift and we can have a 20-20 increment nanometer and what we can see that basically three primary light it, 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 it have a fluorescence. So it's a 385, 488 and 561 nanometer. So we can have all the white spectrum of light because of the assorted size. So you can have that. So a critical challenge for biomarking based on luminescent materials has been the development of nanostructures with highly visible or near infrared emission for precise imaging combined with nanoscale cavities for drug storage and delivery. Now for bioimaging, there are some of the recipes that what we can make it. Yes, that the technique create image in this way, for clinical purpose, besides X-ray, 
and magnetic resonance imaging, that is like the barrier meal. I mean, we, we, we wanted to use oral ingestion of a fluorescent probe is a new approach to imaging a living species. And this is that we have already done with the Drosophila melanogaster to be imaged alive. And that, that probably would be the basic to uh, tell you something. Anyway, so I'm a non-biologist, so I wanted to interact this with the E. coli, and I wanted to see that how E. coli respond. Just with a broth, we use that thing, and we can find. So, E. coli aggregate with fluorescing water soluble sea onion that one can see with a confocal microscopy with a different type of man pass filters. One can see that, and then a little bit higher insect like sea elegans, one can see here the, the starving sea elegans when we have fed it with E. coli with our carbon sea onion, you can, you can see that here it is all with uh, in their intestine. Well, we have done with the oral ingestion of the mosquito, also wanted to see that whether they can glow or not. An oral sea onion ingestion with the egg, larva, purple stage, adult female, adult male, and then with a different type of line shade, we could show that they survive, they grow, and they go for cycles, and there is no toxicity apparent. Even in the larva stage, the entire internal organ can be visualized. And that's something important that we can visualize in the larval stage, the in internal organ. Now, talking about the drug delivery, there's a two facet, chemotherapy, all completely dried, and target drug delivery probably it would be something with the green. So it's only cancer cell that is the try reduce side effects, target oncogens. Here it is targeting everything. So to help minimize side effects using a smaller amount of drug, more patients can be treated. Smaller amount of drug being used to treat each patient, cost of chemotherapy can be reduced. Neighboring cells will not be harmed, targeted to specific cancer cell, carbon onions conjugated with cancer drug service, customized conjugation served to pharmaceutical. Now, here's a comparison that I wanted to tell. Here, now these are celebrated quantum dots, water solubility, no, gold nanoparticle, no, green fluorescence protein, natural, yes, carbon, yes, toxicity, yes, toxicity, yes, toxicity, no, toxicity, no. Target drug delivery, yes with wrapper, yes with wrapper, yes with modification, yes without wrapper. Sometimes if the wrapper goes unwrapped, then the toxic things come. And here it is something that it is deposited here and there. It is short-lived, here it is not short-lived. So we have the advantage. So nanocarbon onions, we have a qualification, non-toxic, self-fluorescing, water-soluble. So this is the simple way that we had wanted to see how it looks like. The treatment in brain requires drug to be administered and how it can be done. But we know there is a lot of problem Already people discuss about that Paul Ehrlich uh, discovery and all these things, so uh, I can readily skip these things. Well, so intravenous tail when injection that we tried, and what we could see that this is the brain intravenous, and these are the three frozen time where we have taken care of, is a 14 second, 15th, and shorts movie, and we have a movie file also to show that how actually this thing can pass to the actual brain. But here it is a two light, two color channels, the red spot, uh, because a lot of light is there, that is to water soluble carbon nano onions, and uh, these are the things, two color channels and autofluorescence uh, lectin stain vessels that can be seen with a, a slice cut thing. These are two photon microscopy, I can skip that. Well, so 
if just watch that how how things can move this this is crossing from the blood here and there how you can see that this entire thing can go inside with the time here, here you can see so the the fluorescent spot that goes inside to the uh, brain completely that one can see with the that we another more time yeah yeah Anyway, if it is stopped, so it's no problem. Okay. Now talking about the frozen horse. So we know that it can cross blood brain barrier. So the question now comes how we can incorporate drug here. Now, what this we wanted to show here that a celebrated drug that is. Uh, Donapizil, which is a Alzheimer drug, that can be that can be put inside to carbon nanoneons, and once it is inside, it lost its common property because this drug is highly soluble in chloroform. But once it's inside, you cannot get it leached by chloroform. But you can see the signature. This is for the nanoneon. And it's a nanonian with this drug, which is in previous buffer, 6.8. But as soon as you change the buffer to 7.4, then it goes out. And now you can leach it with dichromethane or chloroform, and its signature can be shown here. So, so it is clearly that this can, this can clearly hold the drug or even a big molecule, we have other molecules also and you can hold it and normally it is not going to release and you have to do something with a pH and other type of changes to make it like that. Now not only that, actually this also reaches to neurons and there are certain uh, color code here then we have to show that yes, actually it reaches to the neuronal part. That's it. So this is my lab, which is the Downing Hall, built in 1882. It's a heritage building. Here we work. <laughs> and some people, they don't know about the Howrah. That is what is Howrah. Hmm. Kolkata and Howrah is a twin city. This is the bridge. And the left side, left bank is Howrah, right bank is Kolkata, and our institute somewhere here, and one can see this thing. So, I must show this transparency of this slide because my coming to this place was funded by Alexander von Humboldt Foundation and my great association of 40 years. I came as a Humboldt fellow 40 years ago. And this time I said, I want to visit this for this conference. They said, well, fine, we'll be going to funding, fund you, finance you. And so the acknowledgement. And I think I have completed very fast. Yes. I'd be happy to answer anything that what you interest. Yes, please. Anything, anything, because we tried with pipe tin, and it goes inside. Because it's, a, it's a big, it's a seven, eight, nine to 30, 40 nanometer, it's a certain size, it can take care of anything inside. Can you understand the protein? Protein is how big? We have, we have introduced porphyrin, heme group, and that goes. So it's a nano, I'm talking about nano, and protein is in extra unit. Yes, please. Uh, what kind of interaction does it mean in the drug molecules and the tablets? Drug molecule? <coughs> They're just inside with some of the 
sub-chemical uh, uh, bond, electrostatic, hydrogen, van der Waal, all those, because they are now in plural in number. So you know, one van der Waal uh, bond is probably four kilocal, but if there is 100, then it's 400 kilocal. So that's tremendous, that's more than chemical.